Right, let's see if we can uh, tune up my random vertical wire with the Unantenna Plus. So put my radio into straight key mode so I can press the key and uh, get a carrier. Put my Unantenna Plus into tune mode and then key up and tune to dim the SWR light. So let's see. Some, uh, yeah. That's pretty good. And then we put that back into operating position. And SWR on the radio. Looks good. All right, let's call CQ. So the kit arrives in quite a small package and inside we have the main PCB. As you can see, designed to wrap the antenna around as well as holding all the components and the bag full of bits. Let's see what we get inside here. The main PCB is 127 millimeters by 95 millimeters or five inches by three and three quarter inches and holds all the components. It's shaped in a way to double up as a wire winder and includes some strain relief for the wire elements. All the component positions are clearly marked. In addition to the main PCB, there's a smaller board called the polyplate, which will act as a scale for the variable capacitors. There are 46 separate components, but only 14 to solder to the board. And you can check that you have everything by ticking off the parts list in the manual. The manual is really good with full colour pictures, and I particularly like the difficulty rating that QRP guys use that goes from easy to surface mount technology. Very funny. This kit is all through whole components. We start the build with the one microfarad capacitor and then add the 1N4148 diode. Make sure you orient this the right way around and try to avoid adding heat for too long while soldering it. We now add the 470 ohm resistor. So that's C3, D1 and R4 fitted. Now we're going to add D2, the LED. Again, make sure this is installed the right way around. The positive side is clearly marked on the PCB. As you fit each component, you can tick off that step in the manual to keep track of your progress. When I came to fit R1, R2 and R3, it was clear that these components have been resourced as the resistors shipped with my kit were too long to fit the holes in the PCB. I got over this by bending the legs back under each resistor, but this also raised their height a little. The first toroid to wind is T3. It's small, which makes it a little fiddly and has a tap at turn five. But if you take it slow, avoid kinking the wire, it should turn out fine. The QRP guys highlight a very good technique for checking that you've got the right number of turns on your toroid before you cut the wire. And that's to use your mobile phone to take a photograph and then blow it up so that you can see the number of turns that you've put on the toroid. I burn the coating off the wire tails with a lighter and then use a little emery paper to clean them up to bright copper. The PCB has a slightly larger hole for the tap at turn 5 to allow for the double tails. I often test that I have a good solder contact to a toroid by using a continuity checker. Simply touch the probes to the solder pad, not to the toroid wire, to check that a good solder connection has been made. Once you're happy with it, use the cable ties to secure T3 to the PCB. We fit the BNC next. Now I usually use a 15 watt iron to solder components, but for the BNC socket, slide switch, and even the polyvericon capacitors, I'm going to use something a little larger as these components can sink the heat and prevent a good solder joint. With the BNC fitted, we can move on to the slide switch and this can be installed either way around. For kits ordered after the 28th of January, 2018, there is a little modification required to the polyvericon capacitors before we can install them. Pop the plastic case off the capacitor and use a sharp knife to extend the slots through which the tabs protrude. Care is needed not to cut yourself here. Once you're done, two of the tabs will be nice and long. One is still quite short, but it'll be fine. Fit C2 followed by C1, checking that they're flush with the PCB and reasonably square lining up with the markings on the PCB. Once the polyvericons are fitted, we grab the polyplate PCB and tuning capacitor hardware to finish this part of the job. 
The poly plate is held in place using four screws that attach to the top of C1 and C2. We attach a nylon shaft to each capacitor and the knob fits on these shafts. Now we'll fit the wing nuts and screws that we will use to attach the aerial. This is pretty simple, but this is where I find that the wing nut for the counterpoise would not screw down because of the larger resistors used for R1, R2 and R3. I had to add a few brass washers to raise the screw down height of the wing nut to clear these resistors. Now it's time to fill those two big spaces on the PCB. T1 and T2 seem huge compared to the toroids in most QRP kits, but this should make them easier to hold and wind. T1 has a centre tapped primary, which is wound first, followed by the secondary. Follow the manual to make sure that you wind these in the correct direction so that they align with the holes on the PCB. T2 is the easiest to wind, but it has three separate wires, fortunately in three separate colours. Measure these out and then wind each one in turn, again checking that you wind in the direction indicated in the manual. So these larger toroids are much, much easier to wind compared to the really tiny ones you normally get in a QRP kit. So uh, it's made making the toroids really easy. If you are using a lighter to burn off the insulation from your tin copper wire, enamel copper wire, then be very careful about breathing in the fumes. Both T1 and T2 are a little more tricky than T3 when it comes to cleaning the tails and fitting to the board. But if you take your time, tin the tails and double check everything before soldering, you'll be fine. And that's it, a pretty quick build with just the challenge of the three toroids. The finished kit looks really nice despite being a bare bones utilitarian build. All that's left for me to do is add a random length of wire for the aerial and the counterpoise. There are even suggested lengths printed on the PCB. The manual has been brilliant, very clear and with good advice. This can be downloaded from the QRP Guys website if you want to see what you're letting yourself in for. The only problems I had were fitting the oversized 50 ohm resistors for the matching indicator and, as a result of those, the problem with not being able to screw down the counterpoise wing nut without adding spacers. Other than that, it's been a painless experience. So let's get this out in the field for a test. Okay, so uh, just had a couple of uh, QSOs. That was um, Sierra 57 Victor India, stroke portable, Vlado in Hum in Slovenia uh, on 30 meters. And a moment ago had a QSO with uh, Uniform Romeo 4 Lima Charlie Bravo Andy in Kharkov in the Ukraine. Interesting how um, vertical compares to my normal dipole, getting different locations, different areas that my signal's um, arriving in. So that's um, that, that's been quite an education. Now I wouldn't typically use a random wire as an antenna at home or portable. I like to use uh, my dipoles um, or pre-tuned end-fed half wave uh, if I'm going really minimal. But uh, uh, I've been experimenting with the uh, random wire because it's useful when operating from hotels uh, where I have no guarantee of the, the setup. I can just fling a wire out of the window. So this has worked really well. Uh, so what I'm actually using here is a 9.4 meter um, SOTA pole. So this is from SOTA Beams. It's their travel mast. It's about 10 meters, but I've uh, taken off the whippy top section or two. Um, to give me about a 9.4 meter pole and uh, my main element is 8.8 .8 meters and my counterpoise is about 4.8, 4.9 meters. So those are just the random lengths that I've chosen to try and avoid being a half wave on the bands that I'm interested in. Um, a little bit short for 40 meters so I couldn't tune that length of wire for 40 meters using uh, the QRP guys um, on antenna plus but that's not unsurprising that's way too short. Uh, normally I'd use 12 meters or, or longer uh, but it's difficult to get a, on, on the right floor of a hotel to be able to throw a 12 meter wire out of the window and um, so I'm running a little bit short just to uh, make it a bit easier to to operate while traveling. So effective nonetheless uh, it's certainly tuned up between 30 meters up to about 10 meters without any problems at all um, on all the HF bands. So let's have a little talk about the the summary what I thought of the Anantana Plus and uh, whether you might want to think about getting one. So all in all I was pretty happy uh, with the QRP guys Anantana Plus. It's 
proved itself to be quite effective. Obviously I've only used it as a vertical um, it operating portable. Uh, proof of pudding for me will be when I get to use it from a hotel, laying the counterpoise on the floor of the hotel room and throwing the aerial out of the window. Um, those are the challenging conditions that I tend to try and operate in when I'm traveling for business. Uh, in use, um, it was fairly straightforward. I'm going to confess that I actually felt more confident using it when I had a radio with an SWR meter in it. Um, that said, uh, it did work effectively. Sometimes it was very difficult to see the dim dimming the, um, in the LED to show that you were um, tuning correctly, uh, and it took a little while um, of adjusting both knobs to see uh, a reasonable dip, but it always led in me having a reasonably good SWR on all of the bands that I operated on. Um, the other thing I wasn't too sure about is when you flick the button back to operating, sometimes the LED remained um, dimmed, sometimes it lit, sometimes it was quite bright, sometimes it was quite dim. I wasn't quite sure what that was telling me um, and whether that was an indication of um, the matching and maybe how efficient uh, the output power was. But from the radio SWR meter, I knew I always had a low SWR. As a kit, this isn't a bad starting point. If you're a beginner, um, intermediate, this is a great little kit. Only uh, a few components. If you've never made anything with toroids in, this is a good starting point and some slightly challenging um, toroids to wind, but the, the larger toroids actually make that much easier than uh, most QRP kits, which have the, the little tiny toroids in it. So very good as a kit. Um, now, I love the idea of being able to wrap the aerial and counterpoise um, around the actual uh, ATU itself and carry that as a single unit. Um, and, it, and it does work. However, if you're um, a portable operator, you will know that this twists the wire, wrapping it directly around an object like this. And you really want to do a figure of eight around something like a kite winder. These are just a little bit short for winding the wire around. Um, maybe you could make this on a slightly larger PCB, uh, but it's a trade-off between size and uh, convenience then, but that certainly works and I'm going to be able to chuck that in my travel case uh, next time I'm working uh, and travelling for business and want to take the radios with me. So all in all, I'm really happy. Okay guys, I hope you found that useful, especially if you're thinking of buying one of the QRP guys kits. Uh, when they're little aerial solutions. Uh, whatever you're doing though, get out there and enjoy your radio.